Hey there, I'm Source Make, and welcome to the video in deciding which sorting algorithm is best. And this is a really popular interview question, so you should really know the answer to this. Now, the answer, spoiler alert, is actually that there is no best sorting algorithm. It really depends on the data or the given situation. And I know that really sounds a little vague, so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at the factors that decide a good sorting algorithm. There are six of them that we care about. We are going to look at some top tier sorting algorithms and there are four of them that we really care about that are really important. And then there's going to be some code that I'm not really going to go through, but you can read it on af after you watch this video if you want to. That shows you how you actually implement these four sorting algorithms. And I wrote a lot of nice comments, so it sh should be really easy for you to go through. And then we're going to actually look at this decision tree that determines what sorting algorithm we should actually use depending on the situation. Now all of these resources are going to be right here on my website and you can click the link below this video if you want to get to this web page and read along or try the code out yourself. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button for this YouTube channel. Thanks. So we already said that the best sorting algorithm, well there is none because it depends on the given situation. So, so what factors decide on what a good sorting algorithm is? Well, the first factor is the running time, which is simply how quick an algorithm is. And you decide that by big O notation. O of N is like, you know, a godly sorting algorithm, but that really doesn't happen often. Order N log N is really the standard, which you should be aiming for anytime you're trying to sort. And order N squared is really bad. You, you want to kind of avoid that. So the next factor that we care about is space. So how much space does a sorting algorithm need? And in place usually means that no extra space is required, which is really good. So imagine, you know, you have an array to sort. Sometimes you might need to copy like a whole other array full of data if you want to try to sort it. That's not really good in most situations. What would be really good is if the original array, you could just swap elements around and, you know, just play within that array to actually get the sort done because no extra space is required. Um, the third factor is going to be whether the algorithm is stable, which means are the same data points preserved. So for example, if we had this 2, 4, 1, 5, 4, 3 list or array of numbers, when we sort them, we expect 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, because that's how it would be sorted. But you see that this first 4, which we labeled as A, would show up before the second 4, which is labeled as B. And if that happens, that means that the algorithm is stable. It just means that, you know, order is preserved. The first 4 is going to show up in the sorted algorithm first before any other 4s. Now, the next factor is the number of swaps. So remember that this is an algorithm, and there is some computation time that happens. Um, when you actually do these swaps. So for example, if you switch like this two and this one to get those in order, that actually takes some computation cost. And in some situations, that swap actually, you know, it, you don't want to have as many swaps as possible sometimes. Like for example, maybe you, you have a parking lot full of cars and to actually swap two cars, you have to unlock one car door, turn the engine on, move it to you know someplace else, then go into the other car, unlock the door, turn the engine on, drive it over into the first parking spot. Then you have to get back into the original car and drive it into the new parking spot. Like in that situation, doing a lot of swaps would be really annoying. So, so sometimes you want to minimize swaps because it's really expensive. So keep that in mind. The fifth factor is that is the data already sorted? Now sometimes imagine a situation where you have a very long list of data that's already sorted and you just add a few numbers to the end of it that's unsorted and you want to resort the entire list. In that situation, some algorithms perform better than others because, you know, the data is already sort of sorted. So that's something we have to take into consideration if the data isn't random. And the sixth factor that we care about is will the data fit in RAM? So we're doing this all on computers, but imagine that we have like one terabyte of data that's sitting in a file that we need to sort. Well, in that situation, we really can't fit that in RAM. And I know that take, that's taken for granted a lot of the times, but if you're like looking for a big company, you need to know how to do this stuff. So, so make sure you know that some sorting algorithms you're going to have to do with just like hard drive space. And you're going to have to you know, make a special te technique to make that work. So those factors decide which sorting algorithm we actually need. So what sorting algorithms are there that we should actually even consider? Well, there are four that we care about. And there are a lot of sorting algorithms out there, but for an interview situation, you just need to know these four. The first one is selection sort. The time is order n squared, which isn't good. But what selection sort is good at is that 
it's useful if swaps are expensive in that situation because selection sort only uses order and swaps. So in selection sort at most, swaps only happen n times. So each element gets swapped only once at most, which is good for, you know, if you don't need to do a lot of swaps. Insertion sort, on the other hand, is also order n squared, which is not good for us, but, but it's really good if the data is already sorted because in, in that situation where you have like a list of sorted data and maybe there's some data at the end or like that's in, inside somewhere that's not really sorted, insertion sort will work basically on order and time if the data is already sorted. So keep that in mind. And merge sort, these next two algorithms are like the most popular. So if you, you, you should kind of know how these two work, but merge sort is a really popular divide and conquer algorithm. And the time complexity is order n log n. The space complexity, however, is order n, which means it requires a lot of extra space. So if you have an array this long, then you need an array that long too to do merge sort, which sometimes isn't good. But it is stable, which means order is preserved. So, so that's it's got that going for it. And merge sort happens to be really great for your data in like hard drives that can't fit in RAM. So keep that in mind. And finally, quicksort is the last algorithm we need that, you know, everybody loves. Now, in theory, the worst case for quicksort is order n squared. But in reality, if the data is random, then you can do the algorithm in order n log n time. And this order n log n is different from this order n log n in word sort. In practice, quicksort is the quickest algorithm. The, the factor here with this analog end is quicker than merge sort. So people love to use quicksort. You should kind of know how that works. And it is not stable, so that's not good, but it requires no extra space because it's an in-place algorithm. So quicksort is really like, we, we like that if we can use it. I have some code here, some C++ code. There are five functions. Print vector is going to print a vector if you give it um, the vector. We've got selection sort right here. We've got insertion sort, we've got merge sort, we've got quick sort, and we've got just an int main that is going to initialize a vector that's unsorted, and it's going to call each of the sorting algorithms to actually, you know, sort the data. So you can read through this code if you want to see how the algorithms work. Um, I recommend, may maybe I'll do another video on how these algorithms actually work, but I don't think it's necessary. Maybe there are other resources on the internet for that. But what we care about is deciding when should we use each type of algorithm. And that's what this decision tree is for. So let me make this a little bit smaller since we can do that now. So actually a little bit bigger. So does the data fit in RAM? If the answer is no, then, you know, if the data is a lot, then we should use merge sort. And if it does fit in RAM, then we should ask ourselves, are swaps expensive? Well, if swaps are expensive, then we should use selection sort because, um, you know, selection sort is good for that situation. If swaps aren't expensive, then what we care about is the data mostly sorted. Then in that case, we should use insertion sort. But if not, then we should ask the next question, can we use extra space? Sometimes you don't have this luxury. But if you don't want, you can't use extra space, then quick sort is what you should use. And if you can use extra space, then we should ask the question, does it need to be stable? And if the answer is no, it doesn't need to be stable, then quick sort is usually quicker, so we should use that. And if it does need to be stable, then the simple answer is just to use merge sort. Now, this is just a general guideline, and if you follow this, you should really probably get through an interview question pretty, pretty safely. But um, you should be aware that some advanced techniques exist and other algorithms exist. For example, any sort can be made stable. Even quick sort can be made stable. But, you know, sometimes it's not worth it. There are trade-offs. It makes the algorithm perform worse. They use extra data. So, you know, it's always give and take with these sorting algorithms. But if you keep these things in mind and, you know, you tell this to an interviewer, you just show this thought line, then they're going to say, hey, this guy knows the sorting algorithm, so let's, let's hire him. Now, that is sorting algorithms. Um, you, you see the code right here. You can get to this page again. To, to um, If you use the link below this video, you'll get to this page and you can read through the code if you want to. I recommend it. You should actually do that if you need to know how to implement the code, if they ask you that. And I'm Source Make. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and ask if you want to see any other types of videos. Good luck on your interview if you're doing one. But if you're not, you know, you should just have this in 
you know, you should probably bookmark this page and keep it in your back pocket just in case the topic ever comes up. So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. Thanks.